Hello and welcome to Creativity with DA3 Live. I'm your host, Don Allen III, and today we're going to be starting the beginning of a new series. The series is going to be involved with taking a Procreate drawings that we make on live streams, and then we're going to make turn them into Cinema 4D um, creatures. So specifically, today's goal is to turn this illustration here of a dragon thing into a more three-dimensional dragon, one that can, we can orbit around and create an environment. Um, we did this illustration in the first app, which was Procreate, and then we did the second illustration for, I guess, 3D design in a program called Cinema 4D. Now today I'm actually doing something very different, and I'm simultaneously broadcasting to YouTube. So if you click the link in the bio, it will take you to a much higher resolution audio of this live stream as well as a full HD version of my screen capture, so you can follow all the steps uh, in a nicer, larger format. You can click that link in the bio now, uh, but I will be streaming both on Instagram, doing a few shout-outs to the YouTube one to kind of promote that place. I'm thinking this might become a series that I do of having Procreate um, be, the, uh, be the thing that I start off with on live and then do stuff in 3D and After Effects. So again, the goal today is to bring that illustration of a dragon to life in Cinema 4D. And uh, let's go ahead and get to the show. For those of you watching this um, on a later time, skip to the end of the broadcast. We'll see what we can do in an hour. Uh, if you don't like what we have in an hour, then don't watch this video because <laughs> that's what we're going to have by the end. And uh, welcome to the show. Oh wow, we got someone live chat on YouTube. So this is going to be complicated. <laughs> this live chat on Instagram and live chat on YouTube. This is going to be so much fun. Let's get started. Hopefully the audio sounds good. Um, Nikhil Kumar. Oh, he says the sound is distorted. That is good feedback. Uh, man, there might be a lot of technical errors. Let's see if we can fix the audio for Nikhil. Let's see. Uh, we got the Procreate app is running thing with audio. Oh, my microphone isn't actually running. Hold on. Let's turn on the microphone. There's going to be a little bit of technical difficulties, um, as, as you can imagine. And I apologize for that. Let me see if I can get the sound fixed. Test testing, testing. Nikhil, how does it sound now? Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. All right, so today, for those of you just joining, I'm simultaneously broadcasting to YouTube, and we're going to be doing something a little different. We're going to be taking a Procreate drawing into Cinema 4D and turning it into something else. We have a dragon that we did in Procreate, and now we're going to turn it into a three-dimensional dragon in Cinema 4D. Um, Okay, cool. So Nikhil says, yes, the audio is clear now. Yay! Thank you, Nikhil, for letting me know. Um, Nikhil Kumar, everyone. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you, Nikhil. All right. Sorry for the bumpy start. Let us begin. So we are live on YouTube right now. So if you click the link in the bio, you will be there. And you can see the, the video. and It's a full screen capture. There's so much technology working right now. Okay, so we're going to bring in this dragon. Uh, in the Cinema 4D, and that's the program we're in. Welcome to Cinema 4D. And let me see if I can bring the kills chat up there as well so we can see the, the live chat on YouTube. I'm just going to put that over here in the corner. I'll find other ways to manage this in the future. Cool. And let's just adjust this camera so you can see a wide angle. So yeah, we are live on YouTube and live on Instagram. Let's crash the internet together. For starters, I'm going to bring in a plane, and we're going to apply the, uh, I'm going to just kind of rotate this a little bit. I'm going to bring in my drawing onto this plane. It's going to be a little warped, but that is fine. So we're going to go down here, click on the Materials tab, and we're going to bring in a new color. Um, and we can just load an image up. It doesn't have to be a true color. Oh, you can see I had the, uh, the logo of Procreate. So we use the Procreate app to make the arch that I'm going to be bringing in. And I think I still have those posted up on Instagram if you want to see the process to how I made the drawing that we're going to be using today. Where is it? Oh, it's in the downloads. There it is. Oh, no, there's the other one. We're going to use this dragon. We'll go ahead and import this dragon onto the plane and just drag it onto here. There we go. So our, it's done. Congratulations. That's the whole tutorial. 
your dragon is now in 3D. Done. No, I'm just kidding. No, we are just getting started. <laughs> okay, so what I want to do first and foremost is we need to design the face and the head of this monster character. So I like to do that um, a couple of ways. First off, I'm going to move this up here. And uh, let's go ahead and make a new sphere. Yes, we are inside of Cinema 4D today, and we're actually live streaming onto YouTube right now. So if you click the link in the bio, you can see this screen capture in higher quality and better audio. Uh, and I'll have it up for those. Oh yeah, Dragon Ball Z all the way. Don, I can, I can just see the dragon wallpaper here. The dragon wallpaper. Oh my god, I forgot to change the screen. Nikhil, thank you so much for um, helping me out today. I'm... I'm messing this up. Thank you so much, Nikhil. Are you able to see it now? So first off, we brought in the image. Oh, an alarm just went off. Let's go ahead and turn off the alarm. <laughs> uh, we brought in an image into Cinema 4D and we applied it to a, uh, to a plane. And now we can also apply it to a sphere if you wanted. You can apply your drawing to a sphere. But what I actually want to do today is actually sculpt a three-dimensional three dragon. Um, ha, no, bro, you can... Yeah, I can see you now. Okay, cool. Thank you, Nikhil, for joining. All right, so we're going to jump into a mode inside of Cinema 4D called Sculpting, and it completely changes your tabs, and it makes all these editing options pop up. We're also going to turn our display to show all the polygons. So right now, we have all these square polygons. I want to turn these to triangles. And to do that, we go to our, uh, we go to our object, we select the object, and we change it from a standard type to what's called a, uh, I think we'll use tetrahedron. So that, cur that turns every one of the polygons of the sphere to triangles, and they deform much better. And this is going to be super duper important in the next step as we start to sculpt the face of the dragon, and you want to use triangles. At least for me, I like to use triangles when I sculpt in 3D. Okay, next thing is we're going to bump up the number of triangles. So I'm going to increase the segments from 24 to something ridiculous like 74, 74 segments per something. I, I don't know what the math is, I forgot. But I just know we need more polygons if you want to make the face better. But maybe we should start off with lower polygons. Yeah, as a, as a rule of thumb, you should start off low and then slowly refine your, your art until it gets just pumped up. All right, so enough of the intro, let's get into it. We're in the sculpting tool. We're going to turn this into an object by clicking this button up here in the corner. And it's called making it editable. So now that it's editable, all these cool options light up. We can pull, grab, smooth, wax, knife, pinch, flatten, all this geometry. We can do all of this to that sphere now. And now it's like playing with Play-Doh. So I'm going to grab the uh, grab tool, turn on my symmetry. I want to make sure my symmetry is linked together when I use my grab tool. We're going to double check that our symmetry is linked in the X and Y coordinate. So you can see that there's two markers here. Um, so now if we pull on one part of the geometry, we can pull on both. And this is, uh, I like to just start off with, uh, with symmetry and then kind of throughout the process uh, make it asymmetrical. But it kind of helps. So what I'm doing is I'm using the pull tool here. And let's increase the strength of the brush, which is the pressure. And we're going to just kind of pull on the geometry of this sphere to make the snout of this dragon creature. And keep in mind, we're working in low polygons at first. And this is, this is crucial because it's going to help let the computer think better. And the whole time, we're going to keep referencing that image that we made in Procreate. For those of you just joining here on Instagram, welcome to the show, Creativity with DA3 Live. If you want to join us on YouTube right now, you can. We're streaming live to YouTube as we speak. And you click the link in the bio, or you can swipe up in the link in the stories, and you'll be able to see what we're doing. So I'm going to increase the brush size a little bit. And now that we've kind of pulled the geometry, we're going to switch to the grab tool. And same idea, I'm actually going to link the size of the brush as well, so I don't have to keep changing the size of the brush every time I switch the three-dimensional tool. Now we can just grab larger portions of the face, kind of maybe sink this part of the nostrils in, and then if we make the brush super big and go to a side view, we can just drag the whole face forward, kind of really grab that snout of the dragon. Same idea, I'm going to kind of just kind of push in the neck here. 
We're gonna use a different tool later to scarp, uh, to scarp, sorry, to sculpt the neck. Hey, what's up, Wade? Welcome to the YouTube part of this, I guess, broadcast. Um, today we are gonna be taking, I can show you all, I'll reiterate. We're going to be doing this. We're using a Procreate app to take a drawing that we made in Procreate and then we're gonna move it into Cinema 4D to turn it into a three-dimensional world. Um, the goal is to turn our illustration that we had done inside of um, this thing, inside of, uh, inside of Procreate, we're gonna turn that drawing into a three-dimensional drawing. This is what I did of Dragon Ball Z's um, Shenron. So I wanna make another 3D dragon today, but using Procreate as the base of where the design came from. And let's go back to the main show. Um, so I kind of just pulled up the image of Shenron, or not Shenron, sorry, getting my dragons mixed up. And yeah, we're just going to go ahead and pull the geometry in and out of the character. There we go, just kind of just pressing around here. So if we look carefully at the shape of our, um, of our dragon, he's got a very elongated face. So... To do that, I'm going to bump up the size of this brush tremendously. And we're actually just going to jump to a side view. So look at that. There's all these kind of views inside of Cinema 4D. Let's have this display shading, though, so we can see a little bit better. And we can just kind of grab the whole snout of the face. Oh, I didn't mean to rotate. There we go. Let's rotate that back. And just kind of push this scalp up here and then do that. Great. Let's go to the side view. Looks kind of like a car face, um, which is fine for now. Let's go ahead and just kind of turn it into more of a dragon shape. Yeah, there we go. Welcome Jeff and, and Sidra and Maddie and Man Mano Jupu on, on Instagram. Um, for those of you on YouTube, we're streaming live to Instagram as we speak, as well as streaming to uh, YouTube something we'll see how 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 doable this is for the future um wade nikhil does the audio sound good over there is it still good the audio break i have a microphone set up here all right cool so we have kind of the shape a general shape of a, a dragon face so now what i like to do is create a new uh subdivision layer so what did that means uh when you subdivide polygons it makes it so that you have more polygons to work with so if we try to sculpt out an eyeball right now, it'd be pretty difficult because there's not a lot of geometry right there. Um, oh, actually, we need to make the lower jaw. Or maybe we'll make the lower jaw differently. Okay, so cool. This is the beginning of the top of the dragon head. Let's grab our pull tool and just kind of pull the geometry out just a little bit. There we go. Just subtle, subtle movements. Cool. Let's subdivide this whole entire mesh by selecting it. And then creating a new, I guess, subdivision layer, which is this button here, I think. Let me double check. Yeah, add a new layer. And on this layer, we're going to select our object, our base object, and we're going to subdivide it. So you see what that did? By clicking the subdivide. Cool. Thank you so much, Nikhil. So by clicking the subdivide, you see that all those triangles got turned into, like, hexagons, which is a lot more polygons to work with. But we can even subdivide more. But actually, before I do that, let's just kind of, oops, let me go back. We're going to uh, continue on with the pull tool and just kind of pull on the geometry, smooth out the parts that we need. Uh, so, for example, I'm going to use the knife tool and start to carve out where I want an eyeball to be. So, generally speaking, I want the eyes to be there. I'm going to want the, no, uh, the nostrils to be right around here. I also want to pull the forehead up because I kind of want the forehead of the dragon to be have like a little bump on it. Um, Kind of like those dinosaurs that have, they have like that ramming thing on their forehead, whatever the thing is called. Cool. So we'll just do that. Next, we're going to kind of make the cheekbones a little bit more exaggerated. So to do that, I'm just using the grab tool and kind of just grab the geometry and just pull on the cheeks. And then we can pull on the foreheads here. We want to kind of just create that creature. Looks kind of like an alligator, which is good because I think it. I think the initial drawing has that kind of alligator vibe to it. If you hold um, Option, you can orbit your camera. If you hold Command, you can do the opposite of your selection tool. So by default, this pulls if you click, but if you hold Command and then click it, it actually pushes the geometry in. 
Hey, what's up? Up, up, and away. Welcome on Instagram. We're actually live streaming to two platforms right now. We're on YouTube. If you click the link in the bio. Oh, my alarm just went off again. Uh, oh, I have a meeting in an hour. Okay, so we better... <laughs> I need to, you know, we'll see. We'll see what we can do. Let's subdivide our polygons. There we go. So now we got a lot more polygons to work with. And what I'm going to do with these is continue on with pulling the geometry out, maybe making the brush a little bit bigger, or sorry, a little bit smaller, more refined, and kind of really just bring in these cheekbones, because these cheekbones are what makes, it's what makes a dragon a dragon. It's all about their cheeks. There we go. It's all about the cheeks. Let's cheat the system a little bit and reduce the pressure of this brush so that it just kind of has a slower fall off and we can kind of round the bump on the top of the head here. Now if we look carefully at this dragon it has like these two spots near the top of the head where the uh, where the horns are going to be. So let's make those. Since we're still in the uh, we're still symmetrical editing mode we're, we're in luck so we can subdivide again and we can pull on the geometry right here and uh, oops, let me go ahead and reduce the brush size a little bit. So I'm just going to make those bumps on the sides of the head so that we have a spot to put the horns of the dragon. So to do that, we're kind of just using the grab tool and kind of just circling around. We might want to increase the pressure so that it works a little bit faster. There we go. Increase the pressure and just kind of go around. We have our symmetry turned on, clicking around the object, our creature. And uh, let's go ahead and look at a side view of this thing. Looks kind of like a, a deformed mouse at this moment, so we're going to need to fix that in the, <laughs> in the next few minutes. <laughs> but for now, it's all about trying to make it look kind of like a dragon. Okay, so we're just going to add, add to these horns here. Cool. Let's reduce the pressure of the brush and continue on with the cheekbone kind of things. I'm just adding these cheeks. Uh, Don, do you do 2D animation too, like in After Effects or Toon Boom? Uh, uh, yes, Nikhil, to answer your question, I totally do two-dimensional two animation. That's mostly what I do, um, what I work as is a full-time motion graphics designer. And then, oh wow, it looks like a hippo right now. Unintended. I'm trying to make it look like a dragon. Um, but I, what I do is I work as an animator, and then on weekends and evenings I'll do freelance, videography, graphic design, photography, and animation work. Um, uh, I do plan on making a bunch of formal tutorials on how to use After Effects, but I might actually turn that into like a formal course, something where it's like a paid course that has project files and has some of my super secret tips and things, but I'm not actually at a place yet where I can offer that today. Um, I'll make that tutorial in the future, and that, and that course, I mean, but but for now, I'm just kind of taking a look at what it's like to design stuff in these programs. All right, so I'm going to decrease the polygons now, kind of go just backwards a little bit. And the reason why is we're going to use the grab tool and increase the, the uh, brush size so we can do big overarching changes to the geometry. So I'm just kind of just like pull this character's face a little bit more forward, maybe sink the head back in, make the bump a little bit bigger. Uh, we want to make this very much like a dragon. So let's actually make the neck a little bit tighter back there and then have the head start to kind of bend downwards towards the end there. Cool. Now let's, re let's increase the polygons again and see what we're getting. Okay, cool. So we have like a really ugly looking creature. That's good. That's how we're, that's how we're going to work. Yeah, Deb, welcome to uh, the Instagram live feed. Uh, I'm actually streaming to YouTube right now as well. So if you want to click the link in the bio on Instagram, it will take you to a live stream of my desktop where we are designing this on the computer. Um, Nikhil, if you want to see samples of work that I do other than the stuff I post on YouTube, I would encourage you to take a look at my Instagram. The, uh, the name of the Instagram is at Don Allen. Actually, I'll just type it for you. It's at Don Allen the third. So it's three eyes. So I just sent that to you if you want to see the stuff that we do on Instagram. Okay. Let's, uh, I'm going to use the... Whoa, this creature is... It's looking like a mouse. But I want it to look like a dragon. 
So maybe we need to open up its its mouth. So I'm going to use a new tool. We're going to use, look at this. We're going to use the knife tool. The knife tool is super duper precise. And what it does is it chops into the geometry. So we're going to make uh, the, the teeth. So we're going to make this creepy smile that this freaking dragon thing needs to have. And just push this smile up in here. Then what we'll do is use the smoothing tool and we'll smooth out that geometry so that it's not too, too jagged. And then we can use the grab tool to kind of fold those cheekbones over that opening in the mouth. Um, I don't plan on animating this jaw, so I'm not going to make it a separate object. But as a general rule of thumb, if you plan on animating something, you don't want it to be merged to one solid object. You want to have kind of space for it to live somewhere else. So we're just, whoa, sorry, I messed up the uh, bump right there. Cool, so I'm starting to see its teeth a little bit, or its, its mouth. Right now it's teeth, uh, toothless. We'll give it teeth, I promise. Let's grab our knife tool and then just cut the opening of the uh, character's mouth. Whoa, what happened there? Uh, yes, let's uh, make the pressure size a little bit different. Let's go ahead and just chop it, chop it into there. Chop, chop, chop it up. Chop it. All right, I'm actually going to have to probably delete some of those polygons in there because they're, they're they're deforming quite a bit. Or we might be able to just hide them with teeth. A lot of the illustrations I do have lots of problems hidden throughout them. <laughs> uh, but if I'm working for just myself and it's not and I'm not animating for a team, I don't mind the problems because I'm familiar with them. But if I'm working on a group project like a collaborative. Uh, design animated project like at a company or something then I'd take a lot of care into the naming of files the structure of things but all just depends on what your goal is and so for right now my goal is just to make it look like a cool dragon even though it won't actually operate like a nice dragon meaning if I try to animate this mouth and stuff it's gonna it's gonna break and it'll look bad but I don't plan on doing it with this piece all right so I'm pushing the geometry in so we're gonna use the the, uh, the inflate tool and we can inflate the inside of its mouth here there we go so we're kind of just inflating parts wow it looks really like a mouse I think once we add the teeth maybe it will help make it look less like a mouse welcome quill art um, nose part needs to be raised maybe oh I agree thank you Nikhil on YouTube says we should raise the nose so let's uh, let's do that. Let me grab the nose, kind of let's just make like a little divot in its face. And I'm just kind of just press this in and then we'll raise the nose a little bit. And there we go. Okay, that's looking more dragon-like. So interesting how just a little, little, little tiny adjustments can be the difference in, I mean, it still looks like a mouse and I don't like that. <laughs> so let's make it a little bit angrier by kind of shortening these things here. Bump, making that bump on the head a little bit more pronounced. There we go. Um, let's kind of do that. And giving it horns is going to help once we give it the, the horns when, when we put the cones in there. It's going to definitely help to make it look like a dragon. Um, but man, it's going to be, I can't wait until we get into the texturing of this and we start bringing color and we start adding all the scales. I'm probably going to even add fur, like it has like fur on it. But before you do any of that fun stuff, you do have to go through the kind of tedious process of modeling and sculpting if you don't want to pay for licensing fees. I mean, you can always get, you can always find these things online. People, people make their 3D models and submit them on websites all the time. So you can always look them up if you don't feel like modeling. But for me, I want to have complete ownership of this piece. So I'm just going to do everything from start to finish. Ah, this alarm just keeps turning on. All right, let's turn off that alarm again. Okay, so we kind of made these little um, eye sockets. Uh, so I'm kind of just pushing the geometry in 3D space to kind of give us space for when we put the eye eyeballs in. The eyes are going to be glowing yellow because if we look at our reference image from Procreate, we gave it some yellow eyes. Um, for those of you watching this on YouTube or just watching this tutorial, you haven't seen this before, uh, I would encourage you to take a look at the, at the Instagram page because I show how I drew this using an, a mobile app that cost only $6. It's called Procreate. It's a $6 app, but you can do really, really, really good animation with it. 
It's a phenomenal tool. Um, I'm not sponsored by them as of right now, but maybe I'll be reaching out to them in the near future. <laughs> okay. Man, this thing is... Hold on, I need to turn off this alarm. It's really bugging me. It's going to keep turning on throughout the tutorial. Because if I, uh, if, I, if I turn off the alarm, it's going to stop the live feed on Instagram, and I don't want to do that. So we'll just have to keep fixing it. This thing looks like a total mouse right now, and I, <laughs> I don't like it. Does anyone have suggestions or advice? Oh, are you going to make the body, or are you only going to make the head and neck? I'm only going to make what is seen inside of this uh, photo, or this illustration. So I'm not going to make the tail of the character. I'm not going to add the arms and legs, um, unless the angle really needs it. Yeah, this is looking too much like a mouse. Not sure what we can do to fix it. If anyone has ideas on how we can fix this thing to make it look less mouse-like, I'm all ears. Maybe let's get rid of these. These kind of look like ears, but I want them to be horns. Okay. Maybe if we elongate the whole face. So let's go to a, a top-down view here. Yeah, this is the top view of our character. I'm actually going to turn the display so the people on Instagram can see it a little bit better. And uh, what we can do is kind of just, just do things on the sides of the face, kind of sculpt it. So this same method is how they actually make a lot of 3D models of cars. But essentially, you can make a 3D model of just about anything using these techniques. So I hope that folks here get inspired to make something of yourself and, 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 and post it, share it, talk about it. These, these tools are available now. And in just a short time ago, these things were not accessible to everyday consumers. I mean, they're still expensive, but the student versions are more, much more affordable, and those options exist for people if you're interested in getting into this field of design and 3D stuff. All right, this face looks super creepy. Now it's even creepier. Interesting. Maybe we should add some teeth, because right now it's like a grandpa, a grandpa mouse that lost all of its teeth. Um, I want to learn this so I can do album covers. Oh, Volms93 on Instagram. That's a good idea. I do design a lot of uh, Instagram and album covers for folks using these exact same tools. So by all means, learn them, do them. You can make your own covers and things. These are the same tools, I mean, the whole movie, like, like Deadpool, they use these same exact tools, I'm not even kidding. <laughs> like, it blows my mind, like, these, these tools are accessible now, they're not, they're not, they're not too exclusive, so I'm wondering if a lot of the ad agencies are going to be a little scared right now at the changes in the market, because these things used to be only accessible if you had, like, a big studio, but now you can be kind of a boutique company like myself, a freelancer or an artist, or a voiceover talent, or a writer, or a graphic designer, and access things that only a decade ago were only accessible for like millions, no, not millions, like hundreds of thousands of dollars. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Let's see. Let's kind of just bring this face up. I want the, the creature to look kind of mean, so I want to make sure that this kind of, yeah, something like that. We won't show off the side of the face too much, I'm thinking. Oh, I guess we have to, because the illustration shows the side of the face. How did I fix that before? Let's maybe add some more mass underneath the jaw. That yeah, looks like a, like a really cool rat thing. <laughs> oh, sorry, I wasn't looking at the comments on YouTube. It says, uh, it says, are you going to make the body? Okay, make the horns and... Okay, I agree, Wade. Let's do the horns right now. So to do the horns, we're going to jump out of the sculpting tool and go back into our standard view. And then to make the horns, I'm actually going to use, uh, I'm just going to use cones for now. We'll texture them later. So let's add a new cone to the, to the set and turn our display to just grow shading. We don't need to see all the lines for this. And uh, with our cone selected, it puts it in the middle of the field. So we can grab this one here to make it like a more conicular, is that a word? Conicular, conicular, and uh, let's do that. And then we'll place it over here. Then we can turn on what's called a symmetry tag. 
um, and it does exactly what it sounds like. It, uh, it allows you to design with perfect symmetry. So let's turn on the symmetry tag, apply our cone to it. And so now whatever we do to this cone, it does it to the other cone. And actually, I'm going to hide our, our, uh, our reference image. Just put it back there. Cool. So let's go to our cone and let's make sure it rotates from the base, not from the center. Because right now it's going to rotate from the center. Let's go to our cone choose the rotational axis. Oh, it won't let me do that because I already changed the tag. All right, so let's just rotate it from the uh, symmetry tag instead. Oh, don't do that either. Just kidding. Got to do it from here. We should have set this up differently, but we didn't. All right, so let's go ahead and place this down here. Oh, more YouTube comments just came in. Let me see if we can read those. Uh, make the horns. That may help. Pull the nose in. Oh, okay, we can pull the nose. Yeah, I'll pull the nose in in a second. Also get rid of stuff that looks like the buck teeth. Oh, you're right. Yeah, it looks like buck teeth. We can probably just erase those polygons. First, let me do these horns. So it's kind of just uh, make the horns like this. We'll kind of rotate them around, give them a little bit of space, and then we'll move them in 3D space. Cool, and then we'll continue to rotate them. Just rotate it around town. Make them even longer, spikier, and maybe bigger, like a wider base as well would be helpful. And then with that, let's push them in. There we go. Oh, it's kind of popping out of the side of the head here, so you want to make sure it's not doing that. See, this is why I wanted to have the rotational axis by the base of the cone instead of the center, because it just creates difficult problems, unnecessary problems. Okay, let's just do that. That works. This thing looks really creepy. I'm probably not going to show the, the bottom of the neck too much. <laughs> this looks, I don't know what this is. Okay. Let's see, let's bring this in together. So let's take the advice from the YouTubers, Tyler and Wade and Nikhil, who are suggesting that we, uh, we fix the buck teeth feature <laughs> of the character. So to do this, what we're going to do is um, we'll turn on the uh, polygons to show our lines. So it's display grow shading lines. And then we're going to go to our, uh, our, whoa, what, whoa, what happened? Interesting. Very interesting. Oh, because we went out of object mode. I see. So we can't do that. Weird. Okay, so maybe we could maybe fix the problem this way. Huh. Let's go back into object mode and see if we can jump back in it like that. Hmm, doesn't seem to be working. Um, what I'm going to do now is add what's called a smoother deformer. So it's called a, uh, they, they change the name every few years, but I think it's called a subdivision surface now. It used to be called um, hypernerbs. And what it does is it smooths out all your geometry. So now with it thrown on, everything's a little bit smoother on the character, but it's using less math to render it out. Oh, Nikhil says, I also use Cinema 4D for animation, but have stopped making anything for the past two months. Nikhil, get back on it if you get the chance. Ah, this alarm keeps going off. Okay, sorry. Sorry about that. The uh, live feed, well, because it's fun. I don't have a better reason. <laughs> I think it's fun. Let me turn off the subdivision surface. And let's go back into our sculpting tag. But yeah, part of this Wade, though, is it's going to look ugly almost the whole time until you start refining it. I'm not ready to do refining work on it. I'm still, this still creating the overall shapes and stuff. So for instance, I want to add the eyeballs just so I have something to look at. So I added a sphere. I'm going to move the sphere roughly in the place that I want the eyeball to be. And then we're going to squash it. And then we're also going to throw on, or actually, I'm not going to do a symmetry tag. We'll just manually place these ones so that we can control the rotation. But we can squash it down on the Y axis so it's more of a pill body shape. And then we can place it in the, in the sockets and then rotate it down. And then we can also just widen it, place it how we need it to go. We're going to also take that sphere turn it into a more squashy sphere by reducing the width in the x dimension so it's more like a pill pill shape 
and kind of just bring this into the eyeball here. Cool, so we've got one eyeball roughly placed. Might want to sink it into the face just a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. And actually, let's let's turn on the symmetry tag because I don't think I'm putting on like actual eyeball thing on here. Let's kind of just fill up this space. There we go. So we got an eyeball placed in the dragon's face. That's going to be helpful. So let's throw on another symmetry tag. What you know about symmetry? Oh, sorry. This program is called Cinema 4D. I'm having difficulties looking at two different comet feeds. <laughs> um, Maybe I should hire somebody to help me read comments and then respond to them so that I can multitask. All right, cool. So we brought the symmetry tag in. And just for fun, we're going to bring the eyeball in. We're just going to just, I, I just want a color in there for no reason. This isn't going to be the final color, obviously, but I just want to put some color in for fun. So here's some yellow eyes. And then the body of that character is mostly purple. So let's just make a new, let's duplicate that yellow and just do a purple body just for fun. Just so we have something to look at. It's too gray. We just need to add some color. There we go. Just add some color. Let's give it some yellow horns. Cool, cool, cool. All right, let's continue working. Just gotta add some. Just gotta add some fun. I'm gonna add some teeth now using a really weird technique. Oh, um, Tyler says. Wade says, hire me. I need money. Um, you know, join the club. Join the join the club, Wade. <laughs> join the club. All right. So we got this purple dragon. Uh, oh, Tyler says he needs the money more. Well, again, Tyler and Wade just join the club. Sims? What's Sims? Hmm. All right, so let's uh, let's make the teeth. To make the teeth, let's refer to our image real quick. So in the original image that we drew on Procreate, there's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's about seven or eight large teeth in the dragon. So to make those teeth, uh, we're going to use the cone again. And we're going to use what's called a cloner. So let's make a cone. There it is. Ta-da! We got one tooth. Let's push it down into just anywhere. Just, let's just make one tooth. I'm going to hit the R to bring up the rotation tag. Hold shift to rotate it 180 degrees. And then what we're going to do is just change the width so it's a little bit shorter up there. And similar to what we did to the eyeball, we're going to squash it. We're going to squash it in one of the dimensions so that it's a little bit flatter. See what I mean? So now it's like a spikier spikier single tooth and I might make it just a, a tad bit shorter there we go or maybe a little bit longer who knows this thing got some big teeth big old teeth the program is called cinema 4d and if you want to watch the full tutorial I'm streaming live on YouTube right now at the link in the bio on Instagram okay so we got one one tooth what we're gonna do is throw this into what's called an array so once you throw a tooth into an array an array is like, an, is like a list. An array just means list. And it makes a list of all instances of your first object. But then you can change how it's dispersed through that array. And this can create our teeth. So let's go ahead and rotate our teeth around. And then we need to align these teeth to a certain axis. So let's turn up the radius. You can reduce the radius. It depends on what you want to do with the teeth. You can make more teeth. You can take less teeth. All sorts of options are available through this technique. You can make the teeth jagged and off scale. You got to play with an array. The arrays are, are great. So that's a, that's an array. Um, but actually, I might want to make it a little bit more controlled. So I just thought of a new idea. Let's go to a top view real quick. And what we're going to do is map out the shape of where the teeth should be in this view here we're using the pen tool. So we're on a new layer, I hope. And I think the teeth start about here. So we're just going to click and drag. We're just going to go ahead and click and drag. This is where I generally want the teeth to be. So it's like this is like the pen tool inside of Illustrator or Photoshop, if you're familiar with that. Cool. So we have a we have a spline made. They um, they call the they call the line that the makes in the 3D programs instead of calling it a uh, a vector or a pen brush or a stroke. 3D programs call them spline. So this is a spline that matches roughly the shape of the teeth. So what I want to do is have my single tooth of this object here. I want it to map to the shape of the jawline. So to do that, I actually haven't tested this before, so there's a good chance it won't work, which would be hilarious. But we'll go into MoGraph options and go to Cloner Array and drag the, uh, the, the, uh, the cone into the cloner. By default, it makes it into a, like, a, like a pyramid, like a cone. It looks like a Christmas tree by default. Um, but uh, 
you'll have to change that manually. So let's change it from linear to object and have it feed the object of the spline. There we go. So now our teeth align perfectly with our spline object. And then we can go into our individual teeth just like we did before and play with the squash and stretch of each one if it allows us. Looks like it's not letting me. Let me see if we can go to coordinates. Oh, that's odd. It's not letting me change the scale of the end. Oh, there it goes. So let's change the squashiness of the teeth. And then I'm going to rotate the whole clone array by. Oh, you can't rotate the clone. Weird. Oh, let's group the whole object together. So let's group this by selecting the two layers and hitting group. Group objects. There they are. Cool. Um, and then we're going to rotate this somehow. Some Someday we're going to rotate this. Why isn't it rotating? Let's go. What's going on? Oh, because we have the uh, axis center. Okay, so let's just rotate the teeth around. And then we're going to push the teeth into the face, which is always just a hilarious, fun process. So to do that, we're going to grab our, our new object that has all of these things in it. We're going to rotate the teeth. And then we're going to select our transform option and move the teeth. Oh, we, we were off center. I'm going to put the teeth into the face. Uh, and we're going to squash them down a little bit. Ooh, that looks kind of cool. Some spiky things. Uh, I actually want these to be teeth, though. So let's uh, rotate them. Great. And let's go ahead and push, push them down into the face. All right. Let's see. I'm just going to push this back. If you have questions about this, let me know, because this is very confusing looking. And even right now, I'm confused. So I apologize for the, uh, the mess. So I'm just kind of trying to push the teeth into the face as much as I can. Clearly, there's a lot of problems. Um, but it's all, it's all part of the fun. You've got to have fun while you're doing this. And there's actually, you know, there's better ways of doing this. In fact, there's better ways of doing everything that I'm doing in this tutorial. <laughs> But I'm still learning myself. And yeah, look at those pretty teeth. <laughs> uh, kid, let's go back to the cloner and let's turn up. Let's make more instances of our uh, teeth. So right now there's 10 of them. We can make more of them. And then we can even space them out. Yeah, this doesn't look right. Oh, thank you, Tyler. <laughs> I don't know if that's sarcasm, <laughs> but uh, I appreciate it anyway. Let's go ahead and bring these teeth, bring a little tilt on this teeth. There we go. And by the way, you can do all the stuff in virtual reality too. I'm just doing it uh, in two dimensions for now on a two dimensional screen, but I can see in the near future that I might be doing these tutorials completely in virtual reality, which would be really fun, very isolating, but very fun. Go ahead and rotate the whole array forward. Yeah, I, I kind of broke the rig of these teeth, so we're having some issues clearly. Uh, but let's um, let's continue on. All right, so we got our teeth, we have our cloner, we have our spline. Let's go into the individual tooth, our original tooth, patient zero of the tooth, and we got to fix this jaw because you see it. This 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 mouth is all jacked up. So to fix this, uh, nice. Nice job giving us the easiest way of doing things. Yes, that is that is what I'm trying to show you. This process would be con completely condemned by animators. If you're kind of if you're trying to design this with the goal of having it sent off to an animator and they want to animate this, if you gave them this project, you just ruined their day. <laughs> so don't do this for that goal. My goal again to reiterate is to turn this illustration into a 3D drawing using 3D tools. So I want to just do what's basically the bare minimum necessary to get it to that point. That's my goal. That's what's up. Uh, let's go back to a top view of these teeth. Tyler, soon this dragon will be in your dream too. Oh, that would be cool. Dream dragon. Let's turn off our lines real quick so we can just see this creature. 
Um, I'm not happy with the teeth, <laughs> as you can imagine. <laughs> so I might actually go about this a different way again. We're going to turn off all that work that we just did, but not delete it. It's just hidden. And we're going to try it a different way. So I'm going to duplicate our clone object. And we'll go back to just doing it with an array instead, because that's the fastest way. And with our clone in there in the array, we can squash and stretch it course bring the teeth in there and then we can add more teeth to the array looks like a crown of thorns right now let's add more copies there we go and then what we'll do is uh, we'll push this into the face and then rotate it down rotate it around flip it 180 degrees we'll give it a slight incline forward and then what we'll do with this array is we'll just squash it on the uh, on the x dimension oh wow we should have just done this way before this way is way faster than the first way now his teeth are sinking through the face which is hilarious uh, so we're going to need to shorten the teeth go back to the initial clone of the object shrink it down move it into the face into the next dimension uh -oh, we went we shrunk it down too much where are the teeth for those of you joining here on Instagram Live, welcome to Creativity with DA3 Live. I'm your host, Don Allen III, and today we are turning this illustration that we did inside of Procreate, a $6 mobile app on the iPhone and iOS and Android, and we're turning it into a three-dimensional creepy object, but we're clearly at a very early stage of that process. <laughs> so if you want to see the full tutorial in high definition, click the link in the YouTube, no, click the link in the Instagram bio. And that will take you to this tutorial that is being broadcasted live as we speak to YouTube. Um, all right, let's fix these teeth. Let's uh, shrink them a little bit on the Y dimension. There we go. There we go. Getting something. We're getting something now. And then let's widen the teeth again. So we'll grab the whole clone array and then just widen the whole thing in the X dimension. And then we're going to just kind of slowly but carefully move the teeth up and around. Looks like he has lots of bullets in his teeth right now. Tyler, watch a short movie called Wire Cutters, says Nikhil on YouTube. <laughs> All right, let's bring these teeth in. And we'll kind of elongate it too. I think we're kind of missing the, the longness of the face. Let's just push these in, move these down. There we go. These are starting to look like some creepy teeth. Uh, let's fix that as well. Oops, I don't want to hit record. There we go. So I'm kind of just bringing these teeth in. And as you see, it's very much like a trial and error process, at least when I'm trying to do something quickly. Um, and that's, that's also fun for me, but not for everybody else. So if you decide to go into this industry, it's fun if you're patient. It's awful if you're not. Okay. Cool, let's go back to our uh, patient zero of the cone and make it wider and taller. And this is gonna just fill up these teeth. And there we go, we have our teeth now. Yay, we got some teeth in this creature. Oh, you saw the Instagram on the, the, initial, the initial drawing on Instagram. Yes, it is this guy here. We just brought it into, into a plane on 3D just so that we could see it. Whoa, you can look at the back of it, interesting. Okay, I didn't know that it was mirroring it. Um, let's just make the teeth yellow for fun for now. Oh, no! Teeth. There we go. Alright, so we got this going on. Um, let's go back to our sculpture of this face. And we need to fix the, the jaw, obviously, right? So, um, looks a lot more cartoony and meaner. I'm going to want to change that probably by adding fur to the character eventually. But we need to first sculpt it first before I even touch the... Uh... And as you can see, the uh, the teeth are sticking out through the back of the head. So we're going to have to cover this up <laughs> with uh, other solutions. Or we could offset the, the array so that all of them start off on the circle unevenly. That might work too. Okay. So let's go back to our sculpting tag. And we're back in the sculpting editor. Hey, thank you so much, Volum93. I totally butchered your name and my apologies. And uh, let's make sure we're selecting our layer one of our object. 
And with our selection tool made, we can grab the, oh, we're on the wrong layer. Let's try to grab this layer. Uh-oh, it won't let me grab the layer that I need to grab. Hmm, let's go back to object mode then real quick and see. Oh, because I need to grab the subdivision surface, blah, blah. I get confused on this app as well sometimes. Uh, so yeah, it's a thing, it's a thing. Let's go back to the sculpture. Don't know why it's not letting me select our object real quick. What's happening? Okay, I think it works now. Yeah, all right, we're back. Whoa, the, there's way too many polygons right now. This is gonna crash the computer at this rate. It looks super smooth, which is great, but that's something I like to save towards the end of the tutorial because like you can even see all like the bending here, um, which is I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that level of detail for the end, but I don't want to do that while I'm sculpting, or else it's gonna just lag the computer like crazy. So let's go back. I want to turn off whatever I accidentally pressed. I think I flattened something out. Ah, there it is, the subdivision. So let's turn off subdivision, put it on its own. Yeah, okay. I think there should be, we should be able to go back to it now. All right, cool, yeah, so the sculpting tool's back. Let's display our girdle shading lines, and let's turn up the strength of our sculpting brush. And let's sculpt this guy, let's go. Let's, let's make this better. Again, we need to give it that bigger forehead. So let's do that right now, let's give it a bigger, bigger forehead. That's a, right now the brush is apparently very weak. Don't know what's happening with the tool. Let's go to our grab tool and then, or no, let's do the pull tool and increase the pressure. There we go. Let's just pull the forehead out. There we go. Oh, geez. Looks like a dolphin or something. What is what's going on? Let's grab it, pull it back. There we go. There we go. Cool. That's looking a little bit better there. We kind of just put these little divots in the face. Uh-oh, we don't want to show that. All right, and then let's see. Let's look back at our reference image. He's got a wider, shorter nose. So we got to make the nose and the snout a little bit wider, a little bit more dense. So right now it's like a little plastic piece of board or something. And it's not going to support the weight of this big old snout. So let's kind of just elongate it. And then maybe we'll use the inflate tool for a change. So let's go ahead and inflate the face. There we go. We'll just kind of inflate the jaw. Cool, 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 creepy dragon, hopefully. I think when we add the fire, that's gonna also add a lot of depth <laughs> to the 3D nature of this character. Without the fire, it's not really a dragon, it's just a rat creature with fur. So I don't know if this thing is. The snout is the hardest part for me to work on though. Any, any ideas, any suggestions? Uh, it says, this is the first time I've ever seen you do work on the computer besides the Adobe After Effects animation. Oh, wow. Yeah, I usually, well, I guess I have a reason for that. I have to get contracts signed to get permission to show client work on live streams. And not all the clients that I work with are comfortable with having their projects put live. They want to have, you know, complete ownership and complete distribution rights. And for that reason, uh, I would say like 80% of my work is not going to be online ever <laughs> because it helps pay the bills i don't mind um but it, it it's uh i don't get to show i don't get to share everything i work on because of laws and contracts but you need to do that to fund doing fun stuff like this it's all it's all a balancing act i think okay uh, I just watched an ad on Bob the Train. What is that? What is Bob the Train, says Tyler on YouTube. Okay, cool. So we got this jaw. Let me uh, fix this lower part of the jaw. Like, like we need to fix it a lot. First of all, these need to go. Whatever this, Whatever is going on right here needs to go. So let's actually turn this into an object by right-clicking it and then choosing, I forgot the button. Oh, yeah, current state to object. There we go. So now this means all the planes are editable, I hope. Yeah, there we go. And we can grab, hopefully, an individual plane. Oh no, is it not gonna do it? Let me see. Current state to object. Did it work? 
Did it work? Did it work? Did it work? Yes. No, it didn't work. All right, let's try again. Uh, hmm. Sorry, I'm getting confused here, folks. I'm trying to create a way so I can erase individual polygons, but um, I'm kind of having a brain fart. So to fix the brain fart, I think we need to convert something into something else. Let's see. Whoa! This is the dragon without the dragon. <laughs> uh, let's go back. Oh, no, we broke something. Okay, so something's fixed, something's broken. It's a nice mix of the two. I want to convert something. Ah. Okay. We got this object right here, right now. We need to turn it into an object. So I'm going to try to maybe right click on it and do expand object group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably the way. Now when we click on it and go to face selection, there we go. So we can erase individual polygons now. So let's erase all these guys so that we can see into the... Uh, there's more. There's more in there. What? That's odd. Oh, there we go. All right, so now we can kind of see into the face. Uh, let's get rid of these polygons as well. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. Hello, goodbye, hello, goodbye. All right, cool, those are gone. Let's get rid of this one. Nope, not those two, just these two. This is meticulous and, and error-ridden. All right. Cool, it's kind of, uh, he's got an open face now. <laughs> Great, let's bring the teeth forward to hide the problem. Let's hide the problem. Nope, that's not the teeth layer. Let's try these ones. Maybe this is the teeth. Nope, that's not the teeth. Those are the horns. This is the teeth. Great. Let's bring the teeth forward and we will hide, hide, hide the problems away. So also I'm noticing that the teeth aren't bending very nicely. So let's add a new expression, a bend curve. And we're going to bend the geometry so that it kind of makes it curve up along the teeth here. We want it to curve right here. So to do that, we bring in a bend object and uh, we first got to place the bend. Oh, nope, let's not do that. Let's bring this back here. We got to place the bend object at the center of where we want the bending to occur. So I'm going to place this fictitious cube near the center of the face of the freaking thing. And we're going to, oh, don't do that. We're going to, we're going to create the object and make the outer boundaries larger. We want this to bend within this space. So we're, we're going to bend space and time to make the jawline fit <clears throat> to the creature. Cool. So now that we have this, this uh, fictitious box, we can now bend the thing. Ah, it's not bending correctly. We got to bend it the other way. Let's ascend this to the array. Oh, God, what just happened? Oh, right now it's bending each cone individually. We don't want that to happen. We want to bend the whole system. So we need to make the first thing into an object system. So let's convert this into a group objects. And now we can assign the grouped objects a bend deformer. Whoa. So what happens is huge, huge bend deformer. Let's kind of shrink it down. And then let's see if it can, uh, if it can bend the teeth and go. Oh, it's working, but it's at the wrong angle. So let's rotate the angle 90 degrees. All right, we're not going to bend it now. I realize that this is going to be a lot more tedious of a process. Let's just kind of manually place it then. Because I'm having troubles. So I'm just going to place the teeth. Oh, now it's going through the face. All right, the other option we have is to... Uh, we can make the teeth longer and then just push the whole snout, <laughs> the whole snout forward and down. Which I think I'm just going to have to do. So let's go back into our sculptor. And we're just going to push the, we're just going to have to push the, uh, yeah, we're just going to have to do it this way. Hide the problem, hide the problem, hide the problem. Hide the problem, hide the problem, hide the problem. Hide the problem, hide the problem. Looks like a dog now. Dang it. Hide the problem, hide the problem. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, it looks like our hour is about to run up. 
so it looks like we didn't get too far. We didn't finish the tutorial. So that means I'll have to do this in the future. Uh, but at least we got somewhere in this time. Um, do the teeth individually. Oh, you're right, Tyler. That would have been way smarter to do the teeth individually than to use the kind of the cheating array trick. Ah! Yeah, we should have done that. Um, but unfortunately, I got to go right now. I got to go to a meeting. Um, so that pretty much wraps up the tutorial then. Uh, let's see if we can turn on our subdivision surface to smooth it all out. There we go. It's kind of added, added a little bit of smoothing to the, uh, to the piece. Oh, no, we smoothed the wrong layer out. Big surprise. There we go. Let's try this one. All right, well, this is all we got, unfortunately. We didn't get too far. Uh, so that will just leave a lot more space in the near future. Whoa, there's two noses. What is that? Do you see that? What is this? What is, th what is this thing? Oh, there we go. So let's get rid of that. And then turn this back on. Make this sphere a child of the subdivision so it smooths out a lot of the problems. And then we deselect it by going to the object panel here. Cool. All right. So this is what we got in that first hour. Um, you know, again, it's it's not it's not it's not fully there. But I wanted to say, uh, you know, thank you so much for watching this episode of Creativity with DA3. Our goal is still the same. We want to get this illustration of the dragon to be a 3D thing. Where you, uh, if you want to see more stuff like this, go ahead and start off. Uh, take a look at my Instagram page at Don Allen the Third. We do lots of different creative tutorials and styles and brand work and customer work. And thank you so much for watching Creativity with DA3 Live. Have a creative and productive day. Take much care. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs>